Hello, ladies. I would love to talk to you today about one of the most dreaded parts of aging for females, and that is weight gain, especially around the waistline. So I am a female who is over 40, and if you are as well, you may be noticing that that kind of typical hourglass figure that females tend to have tends to disappear as you get into your 40s and 50s. And you wonder where it's happened. What's gone wrong? How did this all of a sudden creep up on you? That's sometimes what I wonder when I look sometimes in the mirror and I see, you know, again, that figure is not the same. And I'm wondering what's going on? Why is this happening? And because I am a functional medicine practitioner, luckily I can understand a little bit more what's going on behind the scenes, kind of underneath the hood, literally inside the body to have these changes happen and really have no idea how it's happened. Maybe you feel like you have the same lifestyle that you've had for many, many years. Maybe you feel like you're exercising fairly often, you eat a fairly healthy whole foods diet, you sleep fairly well, you're not under an incredible amount of stress you've kept everything pretty steady you know so this is common that people feel like they're not doing anything different yet the weight is coming on especially around the midline so i want to let you in on a little secret this is somewhat normal although it's not awesome we don't love it this is somewhat of a normal thing that can happen as we start to especially get into our 40s and beyond and it does have to do with our changing sex hormone levels. The female sex hormones are lowering on the way to and beyond menopause. Estrogen and progesterone are on the decline. This is normal. Our ovaries are not producing as much as they did in our 20s and early to mid 30s. It's okay. But what can happen as these female sex hormones start to lower, and we don't necessarily know this is happening, but it is, is our body isn't responding as well to sugars as we bring them in. So sugars come in in obviously the most obvious type of sugar is like candy, you know, muffins, these kinds of things, things that we know there's added sugar in them, or you can actually see the sugar in the candy in the treat itself or on top. But often sugars are hidden as well in carbohydrates, even some healthy whole grains, some of the more starchy vegetables. And our body, unfortunately, does not respond as well to the sugar coming in, meaning it doesn't break it down as quickly. Insulin is not as sensitive, which is actually what breaks down these sugars and brings them into our cells for use. So a lot of these sugars, actually just free float in the bloodstream and they start to rise and even spike our blood sugars. And with this, it creates some inflammation in the blood, in the cells, and it also slows down our metabolism. So it does make us more prone to weight gain around the belly unfortunate, but there is things we can do about it. So not everyone needs to go on a low to no carb diet, believe it or not, to help them maintain their waistline as you get into your 40s and beyond. There is things that you can do. And one of them is to really ensure that you're not overeating and that you're not eating too frequently. So some things that are really popular, and there is actually some great research behind them, and they do work, is to do some intermittent fasting. Now, you don't have to be extreme to have you have some benefits and results. And I do find extremism in any category, whether it be fasting, extreme diets, extreme exercise, typically, even if you get some initial results with this, there is going to be a rebound effect, a negative impact, if we are going too far outside of what would be considered normal for our body and what we can accomplish. So with intermittent fasting, the research is showing pretty consistently for females that if you are fasting for on average between 12 and 14 hours, which typically, and the easiest way to get this done, isn't during the day, it's in the night. So it's once you finish your dinner, until you get around, until breakfast, whenever you want to start eating the next day. If you can have that span anywhere from 12 to 14 hours, this is enough of a fast that it's actually going to help to sensitize your insulin and it's going to make you more responsive to these carbohydrates when they come in. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to start reducing your carbs significantly. Sometimes, though, we do need to be aware of the types of carbohydrates coming in and how some are higher in sugar than others. So things like potatoes, for example, you wouldn't necessarily think of potatoes as putting sugar in, but they're very high starch. And so they do actually bring our blood sugars up quite quickly. And we're not going to, again, respond to that as well as we get into our 40s and early to mid 50s. So I'm not saying you have to maybe take potatoes out of your diet entirely, especially if you enjoy them. I mean, who doesn't like the odd good French fry or, you know, your own homemade ones if you are baking them in the oven at home. However, we may need to reduce the amount that we take in at once and we may need to reduce our overall intake. So if you like having potatoes every second, third day, two, three times a week, you may need to actually reduce that a little bit because it does elevate the blood sugars and our body doesn't respond as well as we get into our 40s and beyond. And part of that is due to our lowering female sex hormones. 
So there's a couple tips there to keep in mind for you. And again, we don't want to be thinking extremes because especially for females, again, in this age group, what is happening is as our female sex hormone levels are lowering, as our ovaries aren't producing as much as they used to, and it is going to be this way all the way through and into that transition into menopause, what does happen is other areas of our body start to pick up the slack. So the brain communicates with our adrenal glands, and we're able to make a little bit of this estrogen and progesterone there. And this is our backup system for once our ovaries stop producing. So our adrenals also are one of our primary areas that communicates with the brain to respond to stress. So we need to be mindful of this. And if we're overtaxing the adrenals by going into extremes with fasting, extremes with exercise, extremes with anything, it's going to put more stress on our bodies. It's going to put more stress on our adrenals. And our adrenals are already going through an adjustment in this time of life, especially in our 40s and early to mid 50s, to adjust to the changing female sex hormones. So why put more stress on them by stressing them out? What will happen is often these extreme diets, these extreme fasts, they will backfire because the adrenals will not be able to keep up with the amount of stress that we're putting on them. We won't be able to produce enough cortisol. And this actually will also slow down our metabolism and it can create weight gain. So really the less extreme we can be, the more specific we can be. And the more we can understand what's happening with our bodies as we get into our forties and early to mid fifties, don't fight it. These are natural changes. They're meant to happen in our bodies. And we just need to make some minor adjustments to help us respond more positively to what's happening. So if you are noticing this waistline expanding versus staying the same or even getting smaller, you want to know what you can do about it. You don't want to go into doing something extreme. Recognize that if you do, it's probably going to eventually backfire, even if you have some initial good results. I've seen this thousands and thousands of times with women that I've either chatted with or worked with one-on-one. -on -one. I highly recommend that you just put some of those small strategies in place as a starting point, fasting for 12, 13, possibly up to 14 hours a day in between dinner and your breakfast. And really just start to look at how much of those starchy carbohydrates you're bringing in on a daily basis and just start to slowly cut back a little bit. And often this is all that is needed to get that positive response, stop having that waistline expand and get you back to where you're feeling and looking like your best self as you transition towards and into menopause. And if you do want to understand how you could get more specific and individualized with your current health issues, including the weight gain, especially if you have tried these types of strategies and they may not have gotten you 100% to where you want to be, please feel free to reach out to me. So you can connect with me by going to my website at www.angelasimpsonfunctionalmedicine.ca and I'd be really happy to connect with you on a complimentary consult and chat about your health and chat about if it may be a good fit for us to work together to help me optimize your hormone health and overall health and wellness as you approach that transition into menopause and beyond. Thanks so much. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now. 